Greetings from the farm. You've got to hydrate. It's a very, very hot day in what is now coming towards the middle of December and we continue to wait for rains. Whew, rain situation in uh, Southern Africa is a little bit tricky in December 2021. Meanwhile, our vegetable farming ventures continue because as you know, we are well irrigated. So very quick one today, as we take a look through this crop of um, Peseta squash that we have here. Stay with us. So here we are. As ever, we start with the crop poster, which is showing us that this is a squash hygrotech caseta, and it was planted on the uh, November 27. Today is December 12th, my brother's birthday. So the crops have germinated quite well. Very interesting story here because we had two sets of seeds. Oh, by the way, where am I? I'm standing on Riverside 3, Block A, B, and C. And this is where a couple of months ago we had the green beans. Uh, you remember we had a previous video that showed you some of the green beans. Uh, that was here and those green beans basically went through their life, gave us quite a, quite a, a good um, harvest and we're now moved on to the next generation. As you all know, uh, in farming, you use legumes to put some um, nitrogen into the soil. So having a quick walk through the squash plants that are a couple of weeks old and you can basically see how they're doing. We've got the first leaves are out, we're into the second leaves now. Squash is an interesting plant and it's one of the fruiting vegetables that we are focusing on now this time of year here on the farm. Um, absolutely wonderful, wonderful plant. Seeds are reasonably priced and very, 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 very prolific. Let's talk about the spacing. Um, we've got our cartridges here, as you can see. So this is a two meter spacing in between. And then as we do these days, because of our sandy soil, we used a double line, the drip lines. So the line spaced at around about 30 on, the, on each bed. And we drip these every single day. Speaking of germination, we bought these seeds. Um, we had planted, let me, let me say things. We had planted some squash before. And I'm gonna walk all the way over there to the first batch of squash that we planted uh, a couple of months ago, which we have been harvesting from. And you can sort of see how we're doing with the squash. Um, it's a little bit mature now, but it was planted a couple of months ago walk over to the uh, crop poster and see what it actually says all right so here we are looking at the squash yeah this was planted um, September 24th and it's done really well the squash is a very very prolific fruit I will walk back to the new squash as you know about succession planting and you don't plant everything at one time you plant one batch and you plant another batch as the other one is dying off you replace it with another so always have something for the market getting closer in can you see those squashies there hello squishy squashy so those are some of the fruits that the squash um, gives you many names for this crop some call it marrow there we are that flower gets pollinated, becomes a, becomes a fruit, all of that, all the stuff that we all learned in biology in secondary school, in particular I learned it at ISL with Mrs. Handlow's reproduction and we were all sniggering in the corner, sniggering, sniggering, sniggering until she told us off. All right, here's some more of the um, pollinated reproductive organs seed pods otherwise known as fruits because of the fleshy thing <laughs> all right 
So there's some of the squash. Squash grows incredible. Interesting. This squash can be harvested. This one has a lower price than this one. We didn't plant baby marrow. As you can see, this is full marrow or big marrow as opposed to baby marrow. But it's been a very good crop here. Hydrotech strikes again, thanks to Jacob and the guys there at the showgrounds. Uh, really appreciate the products that they give us. Here's a couple more, which is showing us that we should be doing another harvest very, very soon of this one. It is time. It is time. Um, quick story. The other day we had a little bit of an infestation of uh, powdery mildew in here. It's hard to tell with squash when powdery mildew comes in because the leaves look like they've got powdery mildew anyway. Oh, other people call it zucchini. It's got many, 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 many languages. Many names in many languages. It's a nice vegetable. There we go. There's a couple of more there. And there's a few fruits there. So, what we did is we uh, came in and then we pruned, did a bit of a hard prune. You wouldn't have seen all this space a few days ago. We did a hard prune last week and this is the result. So the it allowed, and then of course we sprayed with some dithane, otherwise known as mancozeb, which is more of a softer um, fungicide. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Here it is, here it is. Yeah, there we go. Fruiting vegetables have been a bit of a revelation for us here at Mondo Farms these past few months because you will recall, you will recall that back in winter we were growing the infamous leafy vegetables we were growing your cauliflowers and your broccolis and all of that and oh my goodness me didn't we have problems when the weather changed from august onwards and we started having all those problems with the uh, diamondback moth and everything but we were able to flip because in business you have to pivot and of course farming is a business right that's why we put in all the money and all the resources and hope to make some living out of it. So anyway, we pivoted over into the fruiting vegetables. So we pivoted into squash, butternut, you see some butternut over there, watermelon, and of course the cucumbers uh, that we've also featured in another one, of, another one of our very, very, very popular videos. And the great thing about fruiting vegetables is that you harvest them several times. You do harvest them. I was saying earlier how here on uh, Riverside 3B and C, we had the, the, the green beans and they have done their time. And those guys, the gentlemen that are over there in, uh, on the other side, which is Riverside 2, B and C, are actually tending to the, um, the next generation of green beans. Um, actually, should I go over there and have a quick look? Okay, let's have a very quick look. Let's have a very, very quick look. So here and I'm crossing over the main road over into Riverside 2 and looking at the guys I'm gonna stand in the shade because it is hot. Whew, hot. So the guys are working away looking after this crop of uh, green beans that was planted a couple of days ago and uh, it's now germinated quite well. Had a few gaps so we'll be coming into the gap and uh, today I actually was at Farmer's Barn again, getting some more of the seed. So, just a little bit of a close up to the green beans. The next generation of green beans. Green beans is a very, very, very good crop. I'll actually finish up this video by taking you, ending up back on Riverside 3D and showing you how green beans looks towards the end. Pajanishi, Yasila. But for now, let's go back over to the squash. Uh, the new baby squashes and talk about them a little bit Hey, uh, I'm here on Riverside 2 and Riverside 3. It's a Sunday afternoon. Very very hot I've been spending some time here at the farm and I thought I'd carry you along as I tell you a couple more of the crop stories from here We've been talking about some of the crops that we have 
Uh, we looked at the green beans, we've looked at the squash as well, the squash that I was walking to just now, and uh, we're looking at the, ba the more baby squash. But in the meantime, if you see something, you hear something you like, then please uh, don't forget to uh, press the like button. That's what the thumbs up is for. And also please subscribe to the channel so that the Google algorithm lets you know whenever we make a new video. And also comment, 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 comment. We wanna hear more from you, ask us some questions, tell us about some of your experiences as we share this uh, wonderful farming journey that we're on. So back to the squash, um, the November 27th uh, generation. And one thing you'll notice as I look through is you'll notice a couple of gaps. And this is an interesting story. I first bought the seeds back in January uh, from Hypotech. And we were, we were so busy with other things in January, with the maize and beans and all sorts of things that we never really got around to. And also, every time you take on a new crop, it takes a little bit of a while to get into it. So, we didn't plant the seeds. We planted that batch of this batch of seeds in September and then we planted again from the same package uh, some seed here and we found that we had a problem we had a big problem so now it's when we are we actually had to come back and go back to the shop and buy some more seeds so here in these spaces in fact here is a perfect perfect example of it this is one of the the two plants that germinated from the first batch okay you can see that and then we had to plant again a few days later and here are the new guys here we go and here's another one so they will catch up with their friends and give us sort of a second flash of thing of fruits when we start harvesting in a couple of weeks but as you can see on this one on this bed in this section here riverside uh, 3b <coughs> there's a couple of guys Again, the same story again. Here's one of the older ones that grew. The other seeds that were planted here didn't grow. And now the new seeds, the second batch of seeds, are growing as in here. Again, all part of the resilience uh, that you need to have in farming. Just because something goes wrong, you don't give up. I start crying to your mommy. No, you gotta get up and keep moving. Keep going forward. Because farming is really, really hard. Okay, so back to block B, and this is where the second, the, the other seeds that we bought, they germinated very, very, very well. And as you can see, there's quite a big difference between the germination and the plant population in this block than in this block. It's quite interesting. So they'll all be harvested together. So the other part of the story that you can tell is when you look at the space on Riverside 3A that we had only done the squash as a testing thing for half of 3A and we already had green beans in here because we're more confident in the green beans then you can see that for the second batch, September, we only planted that much but now here in November and December we planted all of this batch and you can see the, the harvest will be quite a thing because the squash proved itself. You, you're growing, developing a farm and you're trying out new crops and don't try and spend too much money on a, a whole big thing and do we have planted 10 hectares of garbage. Try it out, see. Let your team learn about the crop, learn how to look after the crop and everything that it takes. Then once you're successful, you, you can still do it. That's one of the main advantages, of course, of horticultural farming where vegetables are planted under irrigation. Funny comment the other day, I'm on this uh, WhatsApp group um, with some people that have different varying levels of uh, uh, experience. And yeah, there was a comment about people doing horticultural farming without um, irrigation sources and you know, facilities and stuff. And it was a bit of a disaster for that one. So please learn from other people's mistakes, which is why we do as much research as we do. I'm gonna make a comment actually before I head over into the green beans over here, which is another story. I'm gonna make a comment about a new system that we adopted. A couple of months ago, I was at uh, Holland Green Tech uh, making some orders for the cucumbers and stuff. And what did I see? I saw the way they terminated their drip lines 
and I really liked it because we were really having ch challenges with terminating drip lines at the end. Drip lines, the drip tapes, like this. You've got to keep it nice and taut and straight or else it'll fly around in the wind um, and then it won't drip where it's supposed to be because the water from here, you can see the little drip holes there. Yeah, that's the drip hole uh, that does the dripping and the plant is right there. So that's where you want uh, your thing to come, your water to come. So you've got to look after the drip, the drip tips and make sure that they are aligned in straight lines. So anyway, we use this new system that we adopted from Avena Patricia, Avena Bram, and uh, we love it so much. We put this wire, this tying wire here, and then all of them are tagged here, and it's holding everybody straight. Speaking of the uh, drip lines, we actually see the drip tapes in action. So it's now getting into late afternoon, the sun has lost some of its intensity, so we're now able to switch on the drips. And as you can see, the, the lines, which were looking a little bit flat, as hence the name drip tape, are now nice fully flat and the water is dripping out as it starts forcing itself it pushes out some air bubbles this is some of these bubbles that you see there's some air in the tape it takes about a couple of minutes and then it comes out but drip tapes are what they are the water slowly drips and you don't get a lot of uh, wastage of some of the water that you might do so they really tell you where you are um, according to your spacing you have different types of drip tape spacing from 20 centimeter spacings to 30 centimeter spacings here at our farm we were able to get a very good supply of some 40 centimeter spacings from India drips drip tapes from India and now we've been very happy with them we use them across the farm Another quick comment here, as we can see, the spacing that we used here uh, was 60 centimeters from here to here. And you can see the diagonal on this. Oh, here's one of the other new ones that we dripped there. So it might sound a bit strange. We've got 40 millimeter drip tapes, which is what we have available. And then we use 60 millimeters. The drip tape around the drip, it actually does a circumference of about 30 to 35 centimeters. So the crops do okay and even with the light spacing. Why use such a light spacing? It's because of the rainy season, because on top of the drip tapes, there is the drip water that's coming in from the drip. There will be some, some water from the rains, and we find that all our crops grow much, much more prolific in the rainy season. So in the uh, original uh, test plot that we did, uh, we put them at 50 centimeters, and we found that the squash plant, zucchini, grows very, very, very bushy, very, very prolifically. So this one, knowing that it was rainy season, we decided to adapt and use uh, 60 centimeters. Okay, so we come to the end of Riverside Tree and this particular video. And this tree, as you know, has grown and grown and grown. And it doesn't look like this a couple of years ago when we first started planting crops here. This is what is now left of uh, the first green beans uh, that we planted. Let's have a look at the date. This is the green beans that we talked about in the previous video. These were planted sort of endish, endish of August. And they gave us quite a good, a good couple of flushes. If you remember, there was green beans all along here, block B and block C and block D. And as we cleared block B and C, because they were hit by the hail of uh, the hailstorm that we had and they stopped really producing afterwards. But this one survived a little bit. So here we still see some good um, pots, sort of, and we still have some, like here, this is green beans. Now this, when you see it like this, it's basically it's a bit too dry uh, for market. So we shall see what happens here. We're still now looking at the next generation of crops. One of the things we're also trying to control here on the farm is the amount of crops that we actually grow at a certain time because each one that you grow needs a little bit of time to to you know to be looked after so if you plant this you plant this you plant this then you're not able to actually do it and you get slightly overwhelmed and it's like having too many children uh, viewers i'm gonna do something and hope i don't embarrass myself but one of the big problems we have in this farm is they won't do it yeah, 
So all over the place, we have one way as a weed. And uh, right here in this green beans field, I am finding this cheap one way here. Fortunately, I can pull it out, I think, and I've been going to the gym quite a bit. It's there. So here's a bit of one way. Um, it's all over the place in the seeds. And once you let these weeds, these seeds, these weeds go to seed, weed go to seed, that's right. Then you have a real problem. Uh, so we're always getting rid of it all over the place. You can see another one right there as well. Um, by the way, in the background there is our compost facility that you saw in one of our other videos. And it is now roofed and uh, things are moving very well. With a batch of nice fresh compost uh, that's ready to go out into the field um, soonest. Here's another Bondwe. Let's do some more Bondwe pulling. Reach now near the base and pull and pull and pull and then twist and pull and twist some more and it's not coming out okay we saw a video of the grown man fighting with a one way crop and it just wouldn't come out but he was stubborn and stubborn and stubborn and then he bent it and he got another grip and he pulled again and Everyone was like, he needs to stop this, it's now becoming... There we go! Oh my word! No wonder it is such a successful, successful, successful weed. Oh my word! Okay, wow! That is serious. Okay, I think I've killed it. Would I actually... I wonder if this will end up in the final edit. I wonder. <laughs> Well, having been defeated by a Wondwe plant on my very own farm, that Wondwe plant there, I'll try again and pull it. No, I'll do it off camera. <laughs> um, having been defeated by this Wondwe plant, I'm now going to end this video and uh, try and head home. It's a very hot Sunday afternoon and I've had a good sort of walk around the farm doing some scouting and some of the other reports on looking at some of the crops as well as some of the land that was being cleared. So we've had a very good look at Riverside 3. Uh, dipped into Riverside 2 a little bit to look at the green beans and then looked through the squash there as well as the, uh, the little bit of a green beans that is left of here. Guys, viewers, ladies and gentlemen, Avantu Vesu. We're so pleased that you are always coming along to the Mondo Farms channel. Some of you have subscribed and more and more of you are subscribing each and every week. So you always get known, let known by the Google algorithm when uh, new videos are posted. And then a lot of you are pressing the like button. A lot of you are coming back over and over again to share in our story here at Mondo Farms on the outskirts of Chongwe. We shall see you very, very soon. Thanks for stopping by. You take care. Bye-bye.